Welcome to Mission to Mars, a brand new MOOC designed to teach everybody about the planning, the design and the calculation of an interplanetary mission from Earth to Mars. My name is Joseph Ianelli. I am a professor of mechanical engineering at Washington State University in the United States of America and I will be your instructor in this course. Together, we are going to deal with the space mission to Mars by considering five major components, from the foundations of orbital mechanics to the calculation of orbits, the spaceflight to Mars, and also how to pilot and control the spacecraft. These five components will allow us to manage more effectively the simultaneous motion of the celestial bodies and spacecraft as well. By simultaneous motion, we mean the recognition that all the planets and celestial bodies are in motion at the same time. And we have to take that into consideration when planning mission to Mars or to any other planet for that matter. When we consider the outer space motion of celestial bodies, we realize that they are all under the effect of the so-called universal force of gravity. It is a force that is generated by any celestial body due to its own mass. That force, that we can indicate as capital FG, which means the force of gravity, always depends on a universal gravitational constant indicated with capital G. Consider the case of a planet and a space probe. The force Fg depends on the mass capital M of a body that generates that gravitational field, such as Earth or the Sun, and the mass lowercase m of a space probe that is affected by such gravitational field. The force Fg also depends on the inverse of the square of the distance between the centers of mass of these two celestial bodies. So, for instance, if we consider the motion of Earth due to the gravity of the Sun, then our planets will be subject to a force from the Sun directed from the center of the planet towards the center of the Sun. And this force is indicated with an arrow to indicate the fact that Earth, in this case, is attracted in the direction of the Sun by the Sun itself. The distance between the center of the Sun and the center of the Earth, which we call lowercase r for radius, contributes to the gravitational force on Earth in such a way that this force becomes smaller and smaller as the distance increases. And this force of gravity exists on every celestial body in orbit around the Sun, including spacecrafts. The motion of both the spacecraft and the celestial bodies is governed by the law of Newtonian dynamics, which tells us that the total force acting on a body in motion equals the mass of that body times the acceleration of that body. With acceleration being the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And it is these two laws combined that determine the motion of all celestial bodies. These two laws determine the motion of a spacecraft as well, which must execute a trajectory that departs from the orbit of Earth and must reach the orbit of Mars in such a way that when the space probe reaches the orbit of Mars, Mars too is in that location, so that the space probe may be captured by the gravity of Mars. This spatial trajectory may be best represented by showing you an animation. And there it goes. Look at that point labeled Maven. It departed Earth and it reaches Mars's orbit just when Mars itself will be in that location at the rendezvous point so that the space probe, as I said, may be captured by the orbit of the red planet. I look forward to sharing with you all of these details and I think it is going to be very exciting. 
Thank you very much and goodbye. Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen.